Yo, FSD, what's poppin'? Uh, today, we're gonna do some more probability. Uh, today, we're gonna be talking about independent and dependent events. Before we get into that, though, I do wanna kinda talk about this whole and or thing. I know I mentioned it in a different video uh, before this, but I really wanna talk to you about what this is because you're gonna see it, all right? Um, first of all, if you see anything with an and, so don't worry about the warm up right now, I'm just gonna use this kind of blank space, but if you see anything like find the probability of something and then something else. So say I said, what's the probability of rolling a five and then tossing a heads? Whenever you see and, that means you want to multiply your probabilities together. So if I said, what's the probability of ro rolling a five? Okay, well that's one out of six. What's the probability of tossing a heads? One out of two. So since I'm saying, what's the probability of rolling a five and then rolling a heads? You're gonna take your first probability, one over six times one over two is one over 12. Now if you see something or, okay, if you see the word or, that means you are going to add your probability. So say I'm rolling a dice or a number cube. Say, what's the probability of rolling in, let's say, a one or a three? Well, the probability, the probability of rolling a one is one out of six. The probability of rolling a three is one out of six. And so I would add those to, to get two over six or one over three, right? Because I don't care, I could roll a one or a three, both are favorable outcomes to me. So I'm going to add those together. So really, this is a really important thing. So make sure you know how to do this. If you see and or something, something you, uh, there's a probability of something and then something else happening, multiply if you see, oh, the probability of say, picking a yellow marble or a blue marble or something like that, you're gonna add those, okay? So keep that in mind. If you wanna pause the video to write that down, you can. Otherwise, I'm gonna move on. So here we go. Um, we'll, we're gonna do this warm up. If you wanna do the warm up on your own, that's fine. Um, I'm gonna go through it uh, if you'd like me to go through it, all right? So there are five blue marbles, four red, one yellow, two green beads in a bag. Notice I'm saying bag and not big. Find the probability that a bead chosen at random from the bag is whatever. So what is the probability of drawing a blue marble? Well, in order to do this, we gotta figure out, well, how many marbles exist? Uh, let's see, there's five plus four is nine, plus one is 10, plus two is 12. So I know there's 12, uh, sorry, beads, not marbles, whatever. There's 12 beads in the bag. So I can go ahead and write the 12 in my denominator. So what's the probability that I select a blue one? Looks like there's five blue ones, so it'd just be five over 12. And that's it. Green. Uh, well, there's two green beads out of to a total of 12, so you have a two in 12 chance. You could reduce that to one over six if you would like. So this is what I'm talking about. Blue or yellow. Notice the word or. So that's gonna be adding. So the probability of selecting a blue marble is five out of 12, plus the probability of selecting a yellow marble is one out of 12, which gives us a six in 12 chance or a one in two chance, 50%, 0.5, however you wanna say it. Um, not red, not yellow, you could use the complement rule. So if there are four red marble or red beads, then that means, um, that means there's eight beads that are not red, so it'd be eight out of 12. Same thing with yellow. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna get into this stuff. Um, it's not too bad today. Uh, do pay attention to the wording though, because the wording really is going to have a big impact on what you're supposed to do. But let's not chatter too long. Let's get on with it here. So here we go. Independent and dependent events, okay? If you wanna write this down, you can. You don't have to. Again, I'm gonna post these, but Independent events are essentially when you have two different events going on that they do not affect the probability of the other event. So for example, you know, what is the probability of say tossing a heads 
and then selecting a red bead. Me tossing heads or tails has nothing to do with what I pick from the, uh, the back. So those would be considered independent events. The probability of one thing happening or one thing happening does not affect the probability of the other happening whatsoever. Those are independent. So an example, rolling two dice. What is the probability of rolling a two on one die and a six on the other? Well, what's the probability of uh, rolling a two? Well, one out of six, right? The probability of rolling a two is one out of six. What's the probability of rolling a six on the other dice? One out of six as well. So what's the probability of both those things happening? Remember, and one times six times one times, sorry, one over six times one over six is one over 36. So you have a one in 36 chance of rolling a two and then rolling a six. Okay, notice the word and multiply. All right, let's keep rolling here. Dependent events. This is when the outcome of one event affects the probability of the other event. Okay, so let's look at this example. Suppose you received a box of chocolate for Valentine's Day. There are 12 pieces of dark chocolate and 8 pieces of milk chocolate. What is the probability of choosing a dark chocolate first, eating it, and then choosing another dark chocolate? Well, let's take a look. Probability, whoops, the probability of a dark chocolate. Well, we have 12 pieces of dark chocolate. Uh, looks like 12 plus 8 is 20, so there's 20 total pieces of dark chocolate. So the probability of me selecting dark chocolate first is 12 out of 20. Okay, but then I grab that chocolate, I eat it. So that affects the probability of me drawing another dark chocolate, right? So I'm just going to squeeze the word and in here, right? Picking dark chocolate first, eating it, and then choosing another dark chocolate. Well, is my sample space going to be 20? Is there still 20 pieces of chocolate in there? No, I ate one of the pieces of chocolate, right? Specifically, I ate a dark piece of chocolate. So really, I only have 19 pieces of chocolate left. Do you see what I mean by me selecting the one and eating it affects the probability of the second event occurring? Now there's only 19 chocolates to choose from. Not only that, how many dark chocolates are there? Well, I just ate one, so now, now there's only 11 dark chocolates. So notice the probabilities are different. That is dependent events. Me picking a dark chocolate, eating it, affected the probability of the second event. Right? Since it's and, we're just going to multiply those out. Um, it's going to be a big number. I have no idea what that number is. We're just going to do it in the calculator real quick. Um, oops. And I'm getting... I'm getting 33 out of 95, or that's about a 0 0.347, or if you want to convert that to 34.7%, any of those answers work. But the important thing is, hey, you know it's dependent, right? If I eat that piece of chocolate, it's going to affect the, out it's going to affect the outcome of me selecting another piece of chocolate. All right? So hopefully that makes sense. We're going to go ahead and move on, but that's really what independent and dependent events are about. Now we're just going to do some practice questions, all right? So here we go. Um, a six-sided cube. Number cube is labeled with the numbers 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3. Four sides are colored red. One side is white and one side is yellow. Find each probability. There's a whole lot going on, so let's just do a little bit at a time. What's the probability of tossing a two and then tossing another two. Okay, well, probability of me tossing a two looks like two out of six, right? Now, me tossing that first two, is that gonna have any 
effect on the probability of me tossing another two? No, right? It's not going to matter. That's why these are independent events. So I have a two and six chance times a two and six chance is going to be a four and uh, 36 chance, which I believe is a one and nine chance. And that's it. Um, tossing red and then white and then yellow. Well, tossing red, uh, four sides are colored red, so four out of six for red. And then white, uh, one out of six, because it says one side is white, and then yellow, one side is yellow. And you just multiply all those together. I'm not going to actually go through that calculation, but you can type that in your calculator. All right, those are examples of independent events. Let's do some dependent events. Now, this one is a little bit tricky here, okay? So, two number cubes are rolled, one white and one yellow. Explain why the events are dependent and then find the probability. The white cube shows a six and the sum is greater than nine. So, because I'm rolling a six first, that's going to affect the probability of me rolling a number that's greater than nine. I'll show you what I mean. Let's just first take a look at this first one. What is the probability that the white cube shows a six? Well, that's a one in six chance, right? Now, you see the word and, so we're gonna multiply. Now, if I roll that second cube, right? That second cube could be a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six, right? Well, which one of these numbers gives me a total that's greater than nine? So because I rolled a six on the first one, I gotta figure out which numbers will give me a total greater than nine. Well, six plus one is seven, so that's not gonna work. Six plus two is eight, that's not gonna work. Six plus three is nine, but we want greater than nine. So it looks like only these three will work. So the probability of me rolling a six on the white cube is one out of six, and then the probability of me rolling a number that gives us a total greater than nine looks like three out of six. And so my answer would be three out of 36 or one over 12. So that one's a little bit trickier, right? The probability of rolling a sum greater than 9 is dependent on the fact that I rolled a 6 on the first one. All right? Last thing we're going to look at is um, just some examples of doing this from a table. Okay? This table shows the migration from 1995 to 2000. The person randomly selected, blah, 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 blah. So find the probability that an immigrant is from the West. Now, be careful on how this is worded. I want the probability that an emigrant is from the West. So I'm only going to concern myself with emigrants. I'm not looking at everyone. I'm finding the probability that an emigrant is from the West. Okay, this is called conditional probability. So how many total emigrants am I talking about here? Well, let's add this up. 20, 2,808 plus... 2,951 plus 3,243 plus 2,654 gives me a total of 11,654. So these, this is the total amount of people that I am talking about. I'm only looking at immigrants here. I want to find the probability that an immigrant is from the West. Okay, well, how many of these immigrants are from the West? This number, so these are all my immigrants. Of those, 2,654 are from the West. Okay, if you want to pause it and try the other two, go ahead. Otherwise, I'm just going to continue to solve them. What's the probability that someone selected from the South region is an immigrant? So I'm only concerning myself with people from the South region. So I'm going to add those two together, 5,042 plus 3,243. This gives me 8,285. Now, what's the probability that someone selected from the South region is an immigrant? It's going to be this number right here. So 
5042. Next one, what's the prob probability that someone selected is an immigrant and is from the Midwest? So this needs to have both of those things. And I'm talking about everyone here because I'm not saying that someone selected from here is this. I'm saying someone selected is both an immigrant and is from the Midwest. That would be this number right here. And your denominator would be all these numbers added up. I'm not going to add them up. I'm just going to write total. Okay. Um, so that's doing it from a table. Now we'll kind of look at replacement. Because this is another, uh, this, this has to do with independent and dependent probability too. And this talks about cards. When you're doing your stuff, I would just uh, Google search, you know, a, a standard 52 card deck. So you can see all the different cards in case you're not familiar with them, okay? But two cards are drawn from a deck of 52 to determine whether the events are independent, dependent, find the probability. So let's take a look. The probability of selecting two hearts when the first card is replaced. Okay, this whole replacement thing is a, is, is a big idea. It's like when something is being replaced, it means I'm selecting a card and then I'm putting it back into the deck. Okay, that's replacing. If I'm not replacing, that means I'm drawing a card and I'm not putting it back in the deck. So if I'm not putting that deck, that card back in the deck, that means there's less cards to choose from. That makes it a dependent probability type question. So selecting two hearts when the first card is replaced. Well, there's a 13 and 52 chance of selecting a heart. Um, again, I'm, if you want to pull up um, um, all the cards in the deck, I would do that. Really, there's four, um, four uh, what's the word, suits in a deck, right? There's hearts, diamonds, queens, clubs. So I could reduce this to one over four. So I have a one in four chance to draw a heart. So say I draw that heart and I'm putting that back into the deck. That means I have the exact same probability of drawing another heart. I'm using multiply because it's saying selecting two hearts. Well, it's like selecting a heart and then selecting another heart. So that's a 1 in 16 chance. That's an independent event. Okay. How about selecting two, two hearts when the first card is not replaced? Well, I have a 1 in 4 shot to draw a heart in the first time. That comes from 13 over 52. There's 13 hearts in a deck, 52 cards in a deck. But now I've drawn that heart, but I did not put it back. So now there's only 51 cards total, and only 12 of those are hearts because we took one of them and we did not put it back. We'll go ahead and do some multiplication here. And this comes out to about 0 0.06 or a 6% chance. Okay. Last one, what is the probability that you draw a queen it is not replaced, so you're not putting it back in the deck, and then a king is drawn. Well, probability of drawing a queen is 4 out of 52, because there's 4 of them. I'm not putting it back, so now there's only 51 cards left in the deck. Probability of a king is 4 out of 51. Do the multiplication, and then you're good to go. That's about it um, for this section. I believe this is the last section. Don't, don't quote me on that, but... Uh, good luck with everything today, and I'm going to say this again. If you have any questions, please reach out to your teachers. But until then, good luck. Have a great rest of your day.